everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a speed up version of what I did on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show this morning. And if you want to watch this in real time, you can go over to the Art Joy of Sharing um, live stream channel and watch today's video of uh, talking a little bit about design and creating a pet portrait using a photograph of your pet. So as you can see, I have two printed photographs. One of them is in color. The other one I put into a free uh, photo editing program called Paint. And I switched it to black and white and then turned up the contrast as high as I could um, reasonably so that I could show that if you don't feel like drawing your pet, you could just trace it onto a piece of deli paper and use that as your um, way of transferring it to the canvas. This is a six by six uh, stretch canvas panel. So it's like a piece of canvas that's been stretched over cardboard and glued down and then um, some gesso over the top. And that's what I'm gonna use as my base, as my substrate for my piece. So, I decided that I would use the hand-drawn piece that I did based on the picture. Um, either way is fine. Trace it. It's going to look a little bit more proportional to the picture. Uh, draw it yourself. You're getting your own hand and your own eye and your own interpretation of what the picture looks like onto your canvas. Um, for, for the uh, for the one I ended up using, it's on regular paper. The other one I put on deli paper. And you could just glue that down and then paint over the top of it or collage over the top of it. I ended up using my own drawing, which isn't exactly proportionate to the photo. Um, the dog's face is wider than it actually is in the photo because she's got her head tilted up and her mouth open. And so it makes her face more narrow. But... Um, I was talking about how, you know, when you, when you make something, a piece of art, you kind of need to think about design. Is it going to be smack dab in the middle? Is there going to be, you know, the rule of thirds? Is there going to be different colors? What are you going to put in the background? I decided to color blo block the background because that's kind of what it was like in the picture. She was sitting on, well, laying on a... Uh, a blanket that had borders around it and you can see the borders in the background. I'm making this as a gift and so I'm switching the colors to red to predominantly red because that's the favorite color of the person that the gift is for. So I decided to switch that blue panel in the back that's on the left hand side to red and I'm using a piece of uh, gel printed and mark maked uh, deli paper from my basket and then I do want some contrast to that so my other block is kind of blues and turquoises and these pieces have pattern on them which makes them more interesting uh, for this one that I'm just putting on it's a heavier paper so I needed to spritz the back of it with some water to make it adhere better I'm using Liquitex matte gel medium and I like the gel formula of the matte medium the best. It's easiest for me to do this type of collage with. I have a, a Distress Collage brush that I'm using, so it's a nice, flat, stiff brush. And then I also have an old uh, credit card or gift card or something to scrape to kind of smooth with. You don't want to press too hard because the, the paper is compromised with the wet, so you might tear it, but you, do, you can get the the wrinkles and the bumps out. The deli paper always wants to wrinkle, so I like to uh, scrape over it with some type of a scraper. So like I said, I decided to use my my hand drawing instead of my tracing. Just That was just my preference uh, to get my own hand and brain into the art. So I'm using it kind of as a pattern, basically. I'm not gluing it down like I sometimes do and then you know, painting or collaging with it or collaging it and then tra and then gluing it down like I sometimes do. You've seen me do that before if you've been around here for a long time. 
but I'm more using it as a cutting pattern. So I lay my pattern over the top of a piece of paper, then I trim around it to um, get my shape. And I'm starting out with just this uh, piece of yellow deli paper. It's got yellow paint on it and then it was gel printed. So it's got this excess paint that's like these red dots and it reminded me of a dog. Not this particular dog, but a spotty dog, like a Dalmatian or something, or one of those ones that has the reddish spots on it. Um, I'm trying to think of the breed right now, but I can't. So <laughs> I'm just making the shape. Uh, the way she's laying down, it's kind of like you can see her body stretching out towards the right hand side. You can see a little bit of shadow down where the legs are but not the full legs. And then there is a little bit of a, of a cutout area down at the bottom where the blanket shows through. So that's what I did. Then I took my piece, my pattern piece, and I cut around and cut out a head shape, just using that same piece, that drawing, just cutting it apart. And you can, you, when you do this, you keep the other parts, um, the, the cut off parts, because that's how you can make everything uh, fit properly. So I can put the cutout part where I cut the head off, lay that down first, and then that, that piece fits right in. Um, the new colored piece fits right in where I cut the other part out, if you know what I mean. So in that way, you can keep everything true to your, your drawing or tracing by doing it that way. This isn't always what I do. This is just one way of doing a pet portrait. This month uh, in our drive show, we we're talking about design. And so I was spending a lot of time talking about design during this live stream. So, I mean, not going super in depth, but talking about the ideas of color blocking, the ideas of space. Do you want something not to be exactly in the middle? Talking about one third, two thirds. And then of course, talking about colors. Do you want realistic colors or do you want to change the colors up? I wanted to change these colors because for one, I wanted to use a lot of red. And for another, I wanted it to just be bright and fun. I mean, the dog is a yellow dog, but it's not that color, right? <laughs> it's, not, it's not cadmium yellow color. So then I start, um, I've got my main collage pieces on. I've got this, uh, handkerchief that she had around her neck and I've made I've changed that to red to a gel printed piece of red paper and then I'm now using my pattern and I cut out the features see this is how I'm keeping I'm keeping everything balanced I'm keeping everything straight I'm getting it back in the same places by cutting out the pieces of the paper and then using that to trace on my bits and sometimes I'm freehanding like right now I can tell you know where something is supp supposed to be kind of but um also definitely trying to stay true to my drawing I mean I spent time on that drawing I want I want to be able to use it to inform what I'm doing on the canvas as well so I'm just drawing in some features with a pencil to keep myself straight to know you know what what I'm doing <laughs> so I was thinking about painting next I think I did a little bit more collage before I painted though so this is mixed media there's collage acrylic painting and mark making with Posca pins on it those are the three methods that I used for this one so now I'm looking for some dark brown to blackish paper. I want I want a dark enough paper that it looks like the color of the dog's eyes, which is a dark, like a you know a dark glossy, almost black. But I want it not so dark that I can add black to it and still affect it. If I was to just slap some black paper on there, then I wouldn't be able to make a darker area it within the dark. So that's the reason I'm I was looking for a dark brown paper, and I found some in my baskets, lots of colors of papers and stuff in my baskets. And I'm of course using my cutout bits uh, from my pattern 
to draw my pieces that I'm cutting out here. And I'm putting the drawing face down on the back side of my printed paper, making the shape, cutting it out, and then I have when I flip it over, I've got the printed side of the paper up. Because what's the point of using printed paper if you're not gonna care about whether it's printed paper? <laughs> Now that one I decided it needed a little bit more um, trimming so I pulled it back up and, and trimmed it again. So then I think, what did I do? Oh, I'm cutting out a tongue for the inside of the mouth. And then I think the next thing that I do is to get out some acrylic paint. So the paints I'm using today are, um, oh, I guess I did decide to get out a little bit of uh, India ink and just draw, make some marks around things to clean things up a little bit. And this is where I'm darkening up, like the areas of the nostrils of the dog are darker than the dark. So that's why I wanted to use like a dark brown. Same thing with the eyes. I need to, to um, inset some more circular shapes um, this particular dog has almost kind of like bulging eyes. She's a, a Chihuahua mix uh, with Pomeranian and so her eyes are very round. And I was trying to get some of that dimension by adding the darkest dark. So then I'm getting out some different colors of uh, heavy body paint. These are Dina Wakely paints. And I'm just putting them on an extra piece of that deli paper that I had to trace with earlier. And I'm going to, I thought I was going to do crazy colors. You know, sometimes it's fun to do a portrait with crazy colors. I ended up using all the warm colors on the dog and not, um, I thought I was going to use the green and blue to, uh, to cool out the shadow areas, which would have been fine. <laughs> I thought it would have been fine too. I just ended up not doing it. You never know for sure what you're going to do until you start doing it. That's, um, I mean, you can think about design and you can make a plan for something, but then ultimately you end up doing what you do. So I'm using a lot of that uh, cheddar orange color and the Sedona red color. And then I've got yellow, bright yellow, and then I've got white and black, and I'm mixing those colors together. And I also at some point mix in a little bit of pink, I think, I don't know. Uh, but mostly just the warm palette there and um, kind of ignoring the the blue and green completely. <laughs> I also mix some black with the red, um, that weird rusty red color, and it makes a really nice dark brown as I'm going along. I'm uh, using the white for the highlight there's a lot of highlights on this this particular picture. And then I'm using, oh, here we go. Oh, I, I guess I used a little bit of that color on, as a shadow, the green and blue as a shadow. But on the background, not on the dog. <laughs> so this is just acrylic painting, painting over the top of my collage. Um, trying to look at the picture and put the colors and the shadows and highlights in where I think they should be. I'm definitely start, starting to be able to tell that the face from the bottom of the left to the right ear is a lot wider than the picture and that is is something that you have to think about if you're going to use your own drawing. If you traced it you would get the propor proportions pretty correct right because you're using it as a direct trace and it would have in the case of a portrait, whether it's a por portrait of a pet or a portrait of a person, getting those proportions correct and, you know, the spacing and the shapes correct makes it look like what you're trying to make. If this was just some random dog, doesn't matter because it could look like a different dog, right? But if you're truly, truly trying to make something that looks exactly like the picture, getting those proportions right is, is really important. And doing the tracing would probably make it a little bit more accurate. This is still cute. It still looks like the dog. 
still look like my dog Mika, which is, is who is in the picture. Uh, but it's not as obvious as it could be. I guess that's what I'm saying. So I started by adding in the in lightest colors and then get moving to the dark. So um, I'm using some of that red, some of the orange, some of the yellows, mixing it with white to create all these different colors that are in the fur. Um, she has gold and yellow fur on the top, but the undercoat is white. So that's how come you're getting so much different variation in the fur. She's not one color. And then I want a pretty dark color for the real deep shadows around the mouth and, you know, under the ears and stuff like that, around the eyes. That reddish color mixed with the black, it makes a nice dark red. So I'm using that. And I just continue to paint with a little paintbrush until I'm happy with how I think it looks. All the warm colors, none of the dark colors. I used the pink in the eyes later. I can't remember if I used it for anything else because I do have the, out that kind of bubblegum pink color. So design-wise, the, the most obvious sections of the, of the face are adhering to the one-third, two-third rule. So if you go from the top down, the eyes are right at the one-third. And if you go from the right to the left, you've got the edge of the eye and the face being on almost on the two-thirds line from the other side. And that's pleasing. It's not, you know, this face right in the middle. It's more interesting if things are a little bit asymmetrical. Our brains do like symmetry for sure, but in, in creation and design of art, it's nice to have um, asymmetry. So one thing that I haven't done yet is I need to bring in some of that blue and turquoise colors from the background into the foreground. That's another good kind of rule of art is that you want to uh, make sure that your colors are all the way through the composition. Oh, I, I'm really quickly putting on the little dog tag thing that she wears. I uh, had forgotten. <laughs> so I cut out a little bit of silver paper and a piece of pink paper and I stuck it down with my fingers. I also wanted to put the bows on. Uh, this picture was right after she, she came out of uh, her last grooming appointment. So she had little bows that only last for a couple hours, <laughs> but they're cute as long as they last. And she also was wearing a little uh, handkerchief that they put on her at the grooming place. And she got her summer shave, so her hair is a lot shorter than it normally is. But it's a cute picture. She's smiling in the picture, so. On the right side, I used red paper to make the bow, but on the left side, the red paper wouldn't have showed up. So I used pink instead. But yet your brain doesn't really say those two uh, bows are different colors, right? It doesn't say that. Even though you know it is, you don't see that when you're looking at it. So then to bring in the blues and greens um, into the scarf, I'm using Posca pins. And I've got a turquoise one and a blue one, and then I get out a darker blue and there is pattern in that printed paper from a stencil, and so I'm just using that to inform where I'm putting the color. I'm just, you know, drawing circles around things that are already there. And then I do end up bringing in a little bit of yellow, and hmm, I think, I don't know if I did orange or not, yellow and red, I don't know, anyway. I, I did bring a couple more colors into this scarf, but it makes it fun like this scarf that's on the dog. Not the same, but fun. Bright and colorful and full of pattern. And I use the Posca pins to do a little bit more um, refining and adding a few more highlights and things like that. Some whiskers, stuff like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, remember to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below if you have a question. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells if they got turned off during the random sweep and you haven't been getting notified. <laughs> and of course, you can join my channel membership for $1.99 a month. And uh, 
the exclusive content comes out on the 15th. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.